I'm excited. I made a little quiz for you. Like a pre-test. Like back in school, a quiz. Oh, no. <laughs> It'll be fun. It's a fun quiz that if you fail, you're no longer allowed to be on the podcast. I'm Hannah, and she's Rachel, and this is the Are You Talking to Me podcast. All right, for everybody out there, I, Rachel, am taking over the podcast today. And we're watching, well, I've watched a Hallmark Christmas movie for today's podcast because that is my personality. That's all I watch. Um, everyone asks me if I've seen any movie that anyone has ever seen. It's always a no. But if they ask me if I've seen a Hallmark Christmas movie, 200 times percent, I have, for sure. So, I am one who has seen maybe two or three Hallmark movies in my whole life. I will not give you much about this up front because Hannah is taking a little pre-quiz. The title is my Christmas dream. Okay. That gives you so much. So, yeah. Um, so basically, scenarios in my head that could have just happened. So, basically, I have concocted a little pretest for her. Um, it has is multiple choice. Um, I've asked, I believe, nine questions that you have to guess based off of. I'm taking a test. I should look studious. <laughs> she just put on her glasses, everybody. <laughs> They're blue light blocking glasses. So. They're very cute. I have blue light blocking glasses too. So I will give you the test first, and then I won't tell you what you got right. I will just go into like the quick synopsis of the movie. Okay. And you will be able to find out what you got right by the end, like as we're going through it. Um, these are kind of, I kind of had some fun with this because Hallmark Christmas movies, as most people except for maybe Hannah know, are just full of the same storyline over and over and over again. So if you have seen, there's about five different genres of Hallmark Christmas movies, um, and they all follow very similar patterns, but once you've seen one, you've seen almost all of them. So I am going to start the quiz Right. Get your thinking cap on, your thinking glasses on. Question number one. What job does our main character have? Is it A, the executive assistant to the CEO of a multi-million dollar company? Okay. Is it B, website designer for a chic bakery? Or C, the store manager of a huge chain of department stores. Those are all literally, like, exact same things that would be a homework job. Uh, what was B? Website designer for a chic bakery. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm feeling, that one. All right, I will mark your answer. Mom, Question. if you're listening, you better be playing along, because you watch all the Hallmark movies, so... Question number two. What is her quirky best friend's name? Is it A, Holly, B, Eve, or C, Angel? Holly. I'm going with Holly. How does our protagonist, the main character, meet her love interest? Is it A, when she fires him at work? <laughs> B, when he cuts in line at the coffee shop, making her late for a very important meeting. Or C, when he accidentally tangles her up in his dog's leash. It's definitely B or C. Um, I'm going with C, dog's leash. What does our love interest do for a living? Is it A, owns the rival bakery? B, is he a freelance artist? Or C, a playwright. Rival Bakery. I like that one. All right. This one is more plot driven. 
Okay. So what keeps bringing these two together? What keeps making them run into each other over and over again throughout this movie? Is it A, he's her boss's best friend. B, they both hate Christmas. Okay. Or C, his son wants them to get together so he can be happy. They both hate Christmas. What is preventing them from getting together? A, she's up for a promotion in Paris. B, she has an ex-husband, but the divorce isn't final. Or C, she's agreed to be the surrogate mother of her boss's child. Oh, I hope it's that one. (laughs) I'm choosing that one. (laughs) Finish this quote made by our protagonist at the beginning of the film. Christmas is blank. Is it A, something my mom liked, not me, for children, or C, business, good business? I'm going to go with something my mom liked, not me. All right. The second to last question, question eight, what is the big Christmas event going on in this movie? Is it A, a Christmas cookie bake off? Mm -hmm. B, the annual Christmas display, or C, a Christmas gala. I'm going the cookie bake off. Going with the bakery theme. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's what I'm feeling. Maybe and I just want a cookie. I don't know. <laughs> Here is our last question, probably the most difficult one. Okay. What does the protagonist decide at the end? A. To forget her dream for a guy she just met. Okay. B, to forget her dream for a guy she just met. Mm-hmm. Or C, to forget her dream for a guy she just met. This is actually harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, I think I'm going to have to go with forget her dreams for a guy she just met and let her see. Good answer, good answer. All right, we'll see how you do. So I'm gonna be honest, just right up front. Okay. I think you got like two right. Yeah, I got the (laughs) last one right, I know that. Maybe it's a trick question, just kidding. Okay. Just kidding, just kidding. All right, so we're gonna go into this plot of this movie and I'm gonna see if I can surprise Hannah at all with any of this, uh, these plots because for Hallmark this is a pretty standard movie but it was thrown off a little bit there's a couple things where I was like wait a minute you gave them a line but they're like over 35 I don't understand they're not supposed to be in this movie confused but we start off with Christina she is our businessy businesswoman who only cares about business okay that's all she has time for in her life and you can tell that she is this businessy businesswoman by this montage of her trying on all these business clothes. She's got the suit jacket, she's got the blazer, she's got the skirts, the dresses, everything. She's struggling to find the right outfit. Okay. Then her assistant comes over, Holly, her best friend. (laughs) So dang, you got one right. To come help her because she is just stressing out You know, as the store manager of McDougal's, the largest chain department store in the Midwest, the owner is coming over to meet her and to see how the store is run. And she is just so anxious about this meeting. So she needs Holly to come over and help her out. And Holly makes this comment. You know, for the manager of a store that has this huge Christmas display every year, there's not a lot of ho-ho-hoing going around in your house. And she goes, that's because I've got enough Christmas at, at work. I don't need it here. And she goes, yeah, but, but you love Christmas. She goes, no, Christmas is business, good business. And that is how we are propelled into the store. All right. She's, she's busy. She's on her phone. She's struggling. She's She's running around the business, trying to figure out what, how this Christmas display is going, okay? Because it is only like three weeks till Christmas, and, and she 
hasn't gotten an idea yet. But last year's Christmas display was great. They had live turtle doves, they had Piper's piping, you know, whatever the 12 days of Christmas song is, they had all of it and it's perfect. But as she's running through the back, she accidentally gets all this paint spilled on her. Ooh. She's shocked. How dare this happen? Well, that is how we run into the love interest. He's paint painting away, as an artist does. Perfect. And he is in the middle of getting fired by the head guy who, I don't know what he does really, but he, he's the, the old mentor guy, uh, the old wise man of the movie, per okay. se. And he only comes around when it's convenient for the plot, okay? He, otherwise, that we don't see him. <laughs> so he, mostly because he has spilled paint on our protagonist is firing this guy and Christina's like yeah 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 that's fine we're gonna fire him get him out of here so that propels us propels him out of the movie until of course it's convenient again for us to need him to give us some more old wise man advice and poor Kurt Kurt Stone freelance painter he doesn't work there anymore and he hates Christina then there's an announcement over the intercom or maybe she gets a text or someone finds out that Mrs. McDougal is here and she wants to talk to all of the managers of the store. Oh no. But it's good news. It's good news. She is opening up another store in Paris and she wants one of these managers to head it up. Now you might think, why does she just pick the store manager? Like, why does she want the jewelry manager or, like, the fitting room lady to, like, man up the whole, the whole store? But that won't help the movie here. She does tell Christina, though, that she is up for the running. And this makes Christina ecstatic because she loves Paris more than anything. And you can tell because there's a picture of the Eiffel Tower in her apartment. Okay. And that's supposed to let you know this is her dream. Wait, what is her job position? She's the head manager of the entire store. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And for some reason, that doesn't automatically make her, like, okay, it's going to be you or no one. No, we're also going to tell all the other managers that, like, don't do anything. Because of not only she has to, you know, be the best manager in the store, she also has to get this Christmas display done. Like I said, she hasn't even thought about it, and we're three weeks away. How are you going to get all the supplies and artwork done? In three weeks. She obviously doesn't understand art. So she is running way behind. She's very stressed out. She starts giving Holly more and more tasks. Holly's picking up the slack where she's, where she's lacking, okay? While she's in the middle of all of this hubbub, this little boy comes up and is so sad that the Santa has left for the day. But Christina's like, don't worry, little kid. He's like four. His name's Cooper. She's like, don't worry. I'll deliver your message to Santa. I will personally give it to him. Now, what, what do you want for Christmas? And he goes, I just want my daddy to be happy on Christmas. And you go, wow, that's not a real four-year-old. Now, he starts telling her a little bit more of the story, but then who shows up? Kurt Stone. Kurt Stone. Oh, He's man. the daddy, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. He's the dad of Lil Cooper, single father lives with his mother. She's come to help him out. And he's like, oh, ma'am, I am so sorry. And then he realizes who it is. Christina. He doesn't even understand how Cooper could talk to him. But he goes, you know, thank you for talking to him, Cooper. We're leaving. We're leaving right now. She's like, no, don't worry. This is wonderful. I love talking to kids. And, and I, Santa will be here tomorrow if you want to come and, and talk to him. And yeah. did they say why the mom is there? She, I'm sure she died. The world will never know. They never explained it. It doesn't matter because all we need to know is that he's single. All right. All right. So then right after he leaves, Christina gets news from Mrs. McDougal herself that, you know, you are the front runner, but I'm going to wait until after the Christmas display to announce my final decision. So this is the 25th annual display. It's got to be bigger and better than ever before. More pressure. Jeez. 
Like Just when you haven't thought about it. I know. Three weeks away. I know. I'm like, excuse me. Why don't you just rip my heart out and say you're not going to Paris? Like, come on. But so she's got all of this pressure. A day or so keep passing. Holly every single day is like, so have you got ideas yet? And she goes, no, 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 I'm so busy, you know, blah, blah, blah. I've been trying to think, but I, don't, I just don't have any ideas. And meanwhile, she keeps giving Holly more and more tasks. And Molly is, or Molly, Holly is just basically running the store at this point. And so Cooper shows up again to the store, but he's by himself this time. He's, like, walked from school or something. I don't know why the department store is across the street from school. Yeah, I don't know where he was. But he's, like, a child. He's a baby. And he somehow found McDougal's. I I I wasn't even allowed to go around the block as a kid because I would get lost. Like, I am directionally challenged. So he shows up and Christina finds him and, you know, calls his dad and, and returns him home. And while she's at his house, you know... She notices he's a, he's a very good painter. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry that, that we fired you before. I could really use your help for this annual Christmas display. And how convenient is it that he's got a skill that very much coincides with the need that she needs in this, in this movie? It's, how lucky is she? How, lucky how is would she? you have ever guessed that that would happen? I never would have even thought, you know. I just thought, you know what? He's out. She's just not going to fall in love in this movie. So while she's flirting, Holly just keeps on picking up more of the slack. But she doesn't complain. She's fine. She's whatever. Kurt and Christina start working on on these designs. They've come up with this really cool idea that they're going to take places from around this town and Christmasify them, basically. You know, like, this looks like a gingerbread house or like, you know, the post office is wrapped like a present and all this cool stuff. I think it's a great idea. Mrs. McDougal hates it. She would rather slit her throat than have that be at her store. Okay. She doesn't say that, but I interpret it as that, you know, she was just like, this isn't personal enough. And I was like, it's not personal enough. It's literally the town. What, it, what does this uh, Mrs. McDoodle, McDougal look like? Because I have, like, a vision in my head. Does she have, like, white hair happening? Is she, like, old? Is she middle-aged? What? She's, like, 60s. So, Deidre Hall, I don't know if you know who that is, but she plays Mrs. McDougal. Pretty much she's got shorter and poofier hair in, in the actual movie. She is a no-nonsense businesswoman, you know? Yeah. Everything has to be perfect. And all about her success. Yeah, she looks like a stereotypical rich white woman. What is Christina to do? She's just spent all this time planning the perfect holiday display. She runs into Mr. Old Wise Mentor Guy. That's what happens. And he has this photo that he's kind of showed her earlier in the movie. And it's of him and this little girl. They're both little. They're like children in this. It's like little him and a little girl in front of um, this, this department store, and they're holding hands, and they're very cute, and so he, he shows up again now that she's just distraught. She has no idea what to do. How are we going to make the display? We might as well just do last year's display. He's like, remember that photo I showed you? Guess who that little girl is? Mrs. McDougal herself, as a child, and they were in love, Mr. Mentor Guy and her, but you know, he's never let her go. As, even 60 years later, he never remarried, never found anyone else. He's Whoa. just worked with her, and success was everything to her, okay? So they have concocted an idea. They are going to make, they're going to recreate this picture for the Christmas display. Ooh. Meanwhile, Cooper is destined to have Christina very come personal. over. Yeah, very personal. But, like, here's my question. What, what is everyone else going to say when they see it? Are they yeah. going to give a crap? No. No, just Mrs. McDougal and maybe Old Wise Mentor Guy, who I seriously don't even remember the name of. But, meanwhile, Cooper is destined to have Christina spend Christmas with him and his family. He just, he needs her there. He brings so much light. He loves her so much. They do, him and uh, Christina uh, Kurt do almost kiss um, about 
an hour 15 into the movie when they're putting up the Christmas tree, it like falls on to them and they're like, <gasps> and then they don't because the mom walks in, whatever, you know, the classic, like we almost kissed, but didn't, you know, she, she knows the promotion's coming up, so she can't commit to anything. She's like, oh, I heard always, you know, do Christmas doing this or whatever. She comes up with excuses every time and Kurt's like, yeah, 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 totally. You've got a life besides me. What? That's fine. Normal. And so he, Kurt helps Christina recreate, you know, the Mrs. McDougal picture and whatnot. She's not married, so I don't know if it's Miss McDougal or if it's Mrs., but she's not married, but I've just been calling her Mrs. McDougal this whole time. But they recreate the, the front of the, the store. They have two little kids playing them as children. It's adorable. It's really not that good, though. Like, gonna spill the tea here? Like, it's really not that good. It's, like, tiny and like very low budget but that's what you get for having like four days to do it like i'm not gonna blame the artists here but the people of hallmark christmas movie they got a budget of like two million per movie or something like they had time to put a little bit more work into it but mrs mcdougall loves it she is just overwhelmed by emotion and promotes christina right on the spot wow but guess who hears uh, Kurt. Or Cooper. Cooper. Oh, poor little buddy. And he goes and runs and hides behind some Christmas tree and he's just so sad. And, you know, I understand. He's four and he thought this woman was, like, in love with his dad and saw them, like, almost kiss, probably and was like, my dad's finally happy. My Christmas witch is coming true. But it's not. She's leaving for Paris and she has to leave on Christmas. Oh. That is just, what? Um, oh my God, like how dare they? So while this is all happening now, we fast forward to Christmas. Christina's all packed up. She heads over to Cooper and Kurt's house. It's like, goodbye guys. I will miss you. I'll write to you from Paris or whatever. I don't know. He's, he made her this beautiful art piece of the Eiffel Tower that he's like, you probably won't be needing this anymore because you're going to see it in real life all the time. And she's like, I would love to have that. He's like, I'll mail it to you. So she leaves and drives to the fancy hotel that Mrs. McDougal is with the old man mentor. Oh. They've rekindled their love and they are now Six together. years again. later. <laughs> right. And... She's, like, telling her, like, okay, I'm ready. Oh, my gosh, this is so lovely. You two are together. And then Mrs. McDougal gives her some advice here. You know, I've spent my whole life trying to get success, trying to follow my dreams. But I didn't leave any time for anything else, like, you know, love. And here I am now with my true love, Mr. Old Wise Mentor Guy. And Christina goes, oh, my gosh. Well, there's, there's one more thing I came here to say and then it cuts you hear a doorbell ding dong oh she's back at Kurt and Cooper's house oh I was expecting them to have flown to Paris <laughs> no but there's a little twist so she shows up Cooper answers the door because that's you allow four-year-olds to answer doors at night obviously whatever if they can fine. go to a department store by themselves obviously they can answer a door by themselves yeah that's true but, so he, but here's the thing, the, the grandma and, and the dad didn't even, like, get up to try and, like, go get the door. Like, like, Cooper runs upstairs, and he's like, grandma, look who's here, Santa, you know, granted my wish. And the dad was, like, in the living room, he's like, someone's here? Like, when she walks in, I was like, bro, your son is four. Why is he answering the door? It is, yeah, like, 9 p.m. It is, like, 9 p.m. That is not allowed. Why isn't he sleeping? <laughs> it's Christmas. Oh. You're allowed, or maybe it's Christmas Eve, because he was like, you're allowed one present at the end. Anyway, she comes in, he's like, what are you doing here? And she's like, I have to ask you a question. I need a painter in Paris when I go there for two weeks to help set up the store and train the new manager. Plot twist. And he's like, wait, I, what do you mean? And she's like, I... I'm going to be the corporate 
manager of McDougal's and it is stationed locally right here. I don't have to leave you. And she, he goes, but you always said that Paris felt like home. And she goes, I kid you not, you're my home. Oh God. <laughs> and they like kiss and then it's all fine. And then Cooper's really excited and doesn't go, ew, you're kissing, which is unrealistic. And it was great. It was a good movie. I actually, I'm going to be completely honest. I watched most of this movie all up until the last two minutes uh, when I had to leave to go to work because I was doing research for my Hallmark Christmas movie TV show that I'm writing for class. And I watched up until the last two minutes. I knew how it was going to end. Like, I already knew she, she had, like, rung the doorbell already, and I saw that part. And so I watched the rest this morning and found out how it ended. Last two minutes of the most heartwarming, unexpected movie I've ever seen. Yeah, it's not predictable. I mean, I got a lot of the questions wrong on the quiz, but... But, but here's the, the thing. They're all basically trick questions, because uh, they all happen in every Hallmark movie. Like, all of these things have been true at some point or the other true so yeah you got holly good work thanks i got that she gave up her dream oh and you got that one that's it you went with the bakery theme i I mean it might have i was trying to pick things that could go with other answers just in case like you would be like oh that's a giveaway it's not at a bakery anymore or whatever so I feel like I've seen one that was, like, bakery-based. Or maybe that was, like, one that was on Netflix. I don't know. Oh, is it The Princess Switch? Yeah. That one is good. That's honestly Vanessa Hudgens. I don't think I've seen the whole thing. Is that with Vanessa Hudgens? Yeah. Yeah, where she's, like, one of her is a princess in Aldovia or something. And then the other one is a baker. I think I saw, like, ten minutes, and then I was, like... Never mind. <laughs> yeah, the, the princess Christmas movies, they are very famous. We've got the one with Gretchen Wieners from Mean Girls. She dates a princess she didn't know was a prince. And let me just say, if I found out my boyfriend was a prince, I would not date him. I would break up with him. I'd be like, I am not marrying into your family. I am not following those stupid traditions of being a prince. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, dude. Leaving the royal Stop family. Happening. I feel like it'd be so stressful. Ooh, here's a fun... Here, let's, let's try and pitch some fun Christmas movie ideas now. Okay. Here's one that I've got that would never get made because too much drama. We've got... What if we've got the... Okay, you're dating this guy. You find out he is a prince. Okay. And you're like... But then you, like, find yourself in the middle of what you think is going to be this Christmas movie. But you break up with him. You're like, no, man, I am not getting involved in no prince life, okay? okay? And you, like, go back home. And you, like, have one of those meet cutes with a different guy. And you're in a new Hallmark Christmas movie of, like, like the, the, the dog walker. You fall in love with the dog walker who is wonderful and, and everything and you just and then you date him and then you marry him like you you think it's gonna be the one christmas movie and you, you try to escape it into another christmas movie i like That's that funny. i like that i don't know if i have any ideas oh just just throw out um a random job um nanny <laughs> all right so we've got a nanny and she is so dedicated to her job okay she cares about these kids more than anything but then while she's out you know um walking with the kids in the park she finds a interpretive dancer and he is so talented but he's a little weird so she's like i i don't deal with that like free life you know and so she she can't but then we realize that he is the brother of the lady that she nannies for. And they keep running into each other. And she realizes, maybe I'm too uptight, you know? And and this guy really, he's more than just his interpretive dancing, weird, like, lifestyle, you know? He's got a heart, and and we connect on such a deep level. And I'm I'm not going to be so strict with these kids anymore. And then she's lovely, and, and they get married. There you go. 
There you it's go. It's also at Christmas time. What's, what's the Christmas thing they need to do? Uh, he's performing in the pageant, the Christmas pageant. There we oh, go. Oh, yes. Of course. And, 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 and she, that. the nanny, is making all the costumes for <laughs> Exactly. The and then she has to measure him. <laughs> that's how they get close. That's, that's, that's how they almost kiss. kiss at, at an hour 15. No joke. I was reading, like, all of the, what do you need to include in your Hallmark Christmas movie? And it says, an almost kiss at an hour 15. That's including commercials, by the way. And I literally, we were watching not a Hallmark Christmas movie, but they almost kissed, and we paused it real quick so I could go to the bathroom, and it was an hour 12 into the movie, and we were like, that's too weird. It's, they have their predictability. It's good, but, like, the predictability is what makes you feel safe, you know? We should make some gay ones or ones that have, like... Yeah, we need some people of color involved. There is one on, um... Netflix called the Christmas Calendar, I think, and Princess Switch has a black guy as one of the love interests, but not the main love interest, you know, because that's just not allowed. Yeah, it's kind of funny how like cookie cutter all of their movies are, and all of the movies are like the Twelve Dates of Christmas, My Christmas Dream, Home for the Holidays, like it's so dumb. Like literally. They all are the same, except, like, the jobs that they have. We've got, like, the blogger. We've got the, the baker. We've got the nanny. Every, they have everything. Yeah. So. Oh, I saw one that was a Halloween one last year, I feel like. And there was something with Halloween costumes. And well, that's an easy, that's like a, an easy the, lay up there event that was happening at the school or something and then they just kept meeting and maybe it was a nanny i met or i met one <laughs> i watched one that was called the snow globe it's pretty good she gets trapped inside of a snow globe where it's christmas like every day on repeat mm -hmm. it's pretty good it's basically groundhog day but christmas but they also right. have movies and mysteries where it's a little little suspicious ones too like, it's not just, you know, classic, beautiful, everything's happy. There was one that was, like, this girl gets blocked from flying on her plane. Like, they put her on the no-fly list, but she didn't know that. So she has to, like, go rent a car. But there's only, like, one car left, so she has to share it with this guy who we find out is, like, a secret agent. And, he's, and he's following this woman, and she has this huge, like, mysterious package that she's, like, delivering and stuff. And he's trying to figure out, like what it is and what she's doing but they find out that they've been following the wrong woman with a different name with the same name oh Ooh, it was good but here's the thing she brought like she had all these things in her bag that were like for a car like she had like a christmas hula dancer lady that she's like oh can't ever leave without this to put on your dash of your car and i was like you thought you were going in a plane like why do you have this because you gotta take it on the plane, too, of course. Like, it's funny, and it totally just defies logic, which is, like, what I've honed into. Like, I have this scene in my Christmas pilot that's, like, the main character hates Christmas, obviously. And she live, she's from Hallmark, North Dakota, which doesn't exist, but it's basically just Christmas all the time, and that's all they care about at the holiday festivals. And there's this bell ringer outside one of the stores, and she's just so annoyed with her. She's like, are you serious? So she eventually is just like, this is driving me nuts. And she takes the bell and she chucks it into a snowbank. And at first the bell ringer's like, and, but instead of doing anything about that, she just digs into her coat pocket and pulls out another bell and starts ringing it again. Oh yeah. That's which I think amazing. is just so funny. So just kind of building this world of like, you can never kill the Christmas spirit. It's always here. <laughs> always here so it defies logic why did she have a second bell did she know reyna was going to come and throw it in the snowbank no it doesn't matter it's hallmark don't you need answers. Have your backup bell obviously <laughs> <laughs> what if you want to double fist it <laughs> that's the world of hallmark you know Same. makes you happy at the end and they have they have mastered so i don't remember i have read in some class there was a book or a passage or something about how you don't want to give the audience what they want until the very end. Like, don't solve the problem and then keep the movie going. Just end it after you've solved it. Hallmark has that down to a freaking T because 
they wait until the last second of the movie, they kiss, and literally the credits are rolling while they are still kissing. Like, they are like, you got what you wanted, they kissed, we're done, we're out, bye, that's all we have time for, folks. Peace out. Yeah, literally, it's like, dang. Mic drop. (laughs) Well, that was a good movie, and that was a fun little game to play, and we hope that y'all enjoyed listening to this podcast. Come back again next week for a for another wonderful movie. Yeah, we're not sure what movie we're going to do yet, but I think next week we will both have watched the movie. Oh, for sure. And then we can give you both our opinions on the movie. Well, until next time, I'm Hannah, and that is Rachel, and this is the you talking Are You Talking to Me, to me? podcast.